and then now we're just going to start going into like the layouts and more uh, more components but there's still a lot like I'm not obviously going to cover everything um, but there's a lot of great resources like W3 um, there's also um, y'all have access to lynda.com and then also um, what's the other one um, Braintree or no uh, Treehouse so those are really great resources and just in general the internet has tons of information about this so just to go over layout um, uh, part of HTML the the main one is uh, I'm gonna go over like the main ones and the main one is like nav so it's like so again we're going back to HTML tag you have a nav tag um, and it basically defines the navigation of the site and the things within it would just basically be links so it's just basically URLs within that that tag so it's the same way how y'all nested within the body tag all of your content it's the same concept you would have your nav tag put all your links of your main navigation within that you can also have it so typically it's in the header section or sorry not the header but in the top section and then in your footer you could also have a nav within that and then you have the header tag which uh, defines the header so um, you can definitely mix this up a lot or like uh, combine them in different scenarios but header in just majority of cases is the top portion of the site where you would include the title or the page title um, so that's typically where um, the header would be there's other places in the site where you could reuse header um, so again it, you're not limited to just using it once it's not like the h1 tag where you should only use it once uh, but typically the header is just um, used at the top and has um, some kind of background image or like a background color or something like just to make it stand out but that's, that's not required then you have a section tag uh, which section just defines a section so there's anything can be called a section so section is very like um, very generic um, it's, it's not really saying anything really um, so what I like to picture it as it's it's kind of in between your header and your sorry between your nav and your footer so you're kind of between that section and same thing you're not limited to using it once you can even nest sections if you like to um, and, I, and I'll explain later how you could differentiate those um, then there's an article tag so article just basically defines what um, an article is. So basically like a post or be page content. You can um, kind of um, nest that information within an article tag. Uh, can everybody or can anybody tell me why we do these things or why, why do we call out these tags? So the browser knows how to orient it. Like if you switch to a phone, things that would be side by side know where to be. Um, Sort of, but dig a little bit deeper. Dig a little deeper. So okay, the, so if the phone knows what the tag is, who does it help? Uh, anyone reading it. Okay, so if anyone's reading it, like a voiceover, they would actually call out like, "This is an article," and and say that. Oh, like the accessibility voice. Exactly. Got yep. it. So think of exactly accessibility or uh, some kind of limitation as far as users go, um, and then also search engine. Remember search engines. Are not people; they're robots. So, their only way—they're—they're they're not seeing styles. So that's—they're not seeing photography in general. So there's so if you just like put up a bunch of paragraph heading tags and pictures, they're like okay, great, but they're not going to know how to discern that stuff. If um, it'll you'll be ranked higher, and also you'll meet requirements for people with um, disabilities if you organize your information. Um, then you have the aside tag which basically usually would be used as a sidebar. That's, that's like the most case scenario that you would use that. And then you have your footer tag, which is just the, the base of the site, that's all that is. Uh, footers typically just have like the copyright information, um, links that are not visible at the very top of the page for your main navigation, so like maybe like your privacy policy or terms and conditions 
um, if you have uh, social media links, things like that, those are the typical things you would you would see in your footer. But it could be very as simple as you know just having your logo or or copyrighting them. Um, and then does anybody know what a div is? No. Okay. So div is probably the most used tag. In general, uh, just because div is really just it's it's like a division tag, but um, you can wrap any any content within it to style it. So mainly, it's used to style things. So if you uh, just like we wrap text into a paragraph tag, and we know the browser knows it's a paragraph tag, so your styles are easy to tweak those things. Um, divs are basically used um, within things, so you can have like a div within a div within a div within a div, like crazy amount of divs. Um, so doesn't hurt SEO, doesn't hurt um, like for accessibility reasons because those uh, things don't re usually read those, so they'll kind of just like pass them through. They're not important. So I would treat or think of divs when you want to style things to like um, shift things um, over to the right or make things a little bit bigger, that kind of thing. That's a div tag. Uh, so if I were to put those together, um, obviously I'm I'm not showing the HTML and the head tag in this portion. So right now I'm just kind of like just showing the body tag. Uh, so within that, I would have my nav, I would have a header, some kind of section, and then my footer. That would be the the, the structure there. And if I were to uh, put put that into the browser. This is what I would get. Doesn't look nice, <laughs> but that's what it would show. So notice how every browser will kind of uh, block put into blocks all of these tags. So if I had a div uh, where page was, so like if I had h1 and then a div wrapped around page, what would that do? Without seeing what it does. Can anybody picture that? If I were to put, if I were to have the H1 tag and then an opening div tag, the word page, and then a closing div tag. Uh, so there's, so there's the H1 here, and then if I were to put a div opening Right here, and then a closing one here. What would what would happen there? Oh, it would make it so you could change the the word page, but not the word title. That's possible, yes. But without doing any styles yet, what would the browser automatically do? Hmm. Hmm. It would. No, actually, it would. It would. It would block it. So basically, you would see a line break. So you would see the word page. And then underneath it, title. So it's kind of so you see how I have nav, and then and then and then I have my link in there, and then right after that I start a header tag. Is page title, like side by side with link? It's underneath it, right? It's like it's blocked off. So it's kind of like a line break per se. It it does that. So if I were to wrap page with the div tag or or any similar tag. It would it would do like a line break. Does that make sense? But yes, you could style it and and you could align it so that way it doesn't do that. Um, but that's what the browser default does when you put a div. It just like blocks it off. So you have like this. So invisibly, there's a. So if this was a div, it would it would do it would have like this imaginary space here by default, just with the, just by adding that piece of code. That's all it does. Does div stand for divide? Division. Yes. Got it. I just want to make sure. No. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and then I'm just going to go over some components. Uh, so you have HTML forms, which define um, uh, a form that is used to collect user input. It uses different types of input elements like text, fields, check boxes, radio buttons, submit buttons, and more. So it start, that's the form tag. That's, that's the, the, the parent tag where you start a form. Uh, this is just an example. So if I were to have uh, a paragraph tag within it, um, I have um, the text called first name. There's another tag called BR. Can everybody guess what that means? Break. Exactly. So it's like a line break. So it just pushes everything after that down. Uh, so right after that, I have an input. This is a form element. Uh, input is basically uh, information that you're going to capture from the user. Uh, what is when I when I create my input uh, tag? What is the next thing in there? The type and name. What what are those inside of a tag? What's the expected input? What do we call that 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 uh, property there? Where it says input uh, type attribute. the attribute. So type so so this input that I that I wrote down has two attributes set it has type and name type I have to say it's text so saying that that basically that basically tells the browser this form input um, I want users to type so that's so it automatically creates this this rectangular uh, text field for users when they click on it the browser knows that um, their keyboard pops up if they're on their phone or um, they're able to type it in within their um, computer without you having to do extra code. Um, the next attribute is name. Uh, name for a, for a form in, for a form element um, is required to know what input you're talking about. So basically, when you have one or or more, sorry, when you have one, if you have more than one input, you're going to have to know how they're different, right? So if you're taking, especially in this case, you have first name, last name. If we call both of them first, when they submit it, it's only going to get the last one. So whatever the last name is, it's going to treat that one as the only one. So it's going to skip one. It's, gonna, it's not going to know one exists. Um, so name is very so the name and the form input is very important. Um, y'all guys are not going to be graded on creating forms, but uh, definitely want y'all to like write up one like a very basic one, like like the way I'm putting up. Uh, so notice I put. I wrap both of these inputs within a paragraph tag. There's, again, there's tons and tons of uh, form elements. Uh, these are very basic ones. Uh, there's labels, there's radio buttons, um, there's uh, file um, uh, inputs where you can upload files, that kind of thing. So um, if you ever take the, the advanced web programming class, um, that one we actually create um, dynamic forms. So, Forms that you actually uh, that your users will actually enter information actually get stored into a database, that kind of thing. But of course, we're not gonna, we're not going to go that route. Uh, this is an example of how all the not all of them, but a lot of the the elements, uh, the form elements are are done. So you have text fields, you have radio buttons, you have the select. So you see where country and state; those are just basically uh, select form elements. Or you just have a, a drop down of information there. And then, of course, a submit button. That's very important. Then you have lists. So uh, there's two types of lists. There's an unordered list, which uh, displays each list item within a, with a bullet. And then an ordered list, which displays each list item with an ordered integer. So if we were to create an unordered list, you would see that. So you have a UL tag, which is unordered list, and then you have LI, which is just your list item. Can anybody guess how would you put a sublist to coffee? You would do the, the, the div, and then you would put another UL. And then also indented over one more. But where would you put it? Under coffee. 
under coffee. So you would. Okay. Uh, the, so it's it's beneath coffee. So within the list element, but after the word coffee ends, like UL, open, and then list the items and then list tags themselves, and then close it with the UL. Close UL tag. Exactly. So yeah. So you're close. You're close. So not not beneath, but inside inside of the li. So if you were to put the the you sorry yeah if you were to put the UL within the li. After, right? Because what happens if you put it before coffee? It'd be weird, right? So, again, some browsers help you out, which is not a great thing for a developer because you don't see those errors right away, but specifically Chrome. Uh, so, when you look at this code that you didn't do it correctly on Internet Explorer you're gonna, or Firefox, Firefox is pretty close to Internet Explorer. Um, you'll see those those issues there, but um, um, but yeah, so you you guys are getting getting that. It's great. So this would be the same, but for an ordered list. So you obviously get an integer, so you get an ordered list, and the only difference is the opening close type, so the o, the ol. Uh, has anybody here heard of iframes? No. Okay. So. Um, to display a different web page within your site, uh, you would use the iframe. So the the bit, the most popular way of, of people needing iframes on their site is when they want to display a music video or a, a YouTube video within their site. Um, they would use an iframe. So definitely, like in the MySpace days, iframes like were definitely needed. Um, I don't know if you ever had a um, like a video showing on the on the side, on the navigation area, that was really cool using that, um, and and then you can size them. So it has a lot of attributes for an iframe, and also you can style them. So if I were to put um, an iframe tag in my site, um, one of the main attributes needed is source, um, just like images, and you would put the URL of that of that other site. Um, it would look something like this. So you would, by default, the browser would have this ugly looking border and then it would display the site within it. Uh, so that's just an example where I had my unordered list above it and then an iframe tag right above it. It would do something like that. Um, you can, again, you can size it, you can style it. So typically, you would, the, the, the first thing you would do is remove that ugly border, make it look nice, kind of make it look like it's embedded in the site and doesn't look like an iframe. That's, that's the, the nice way of doing that. Uh, tables, I mean nothing crazy here, so you've seen tables like on uh, PowerPoint presentations, Word documents, and obviously Excel is a table. Um, so that's, it's the same concept but with HTML. Uh, so this is what a table looks like. You have a ta uh, open and closing table tag. Uh, you have a table row, so you have a, a TR. Um, and it's optional. But you can use, um, if you're going to have the first row be the heading tag, the heading row, you would, for each column, you're going to say table heading. So that's the tag. And then the content within it, um, you repeat that as many columns you want. Um, and then once you close the table row, you start the next one. So you would start again table row um, and then do the same concept. So you should have the same amount of columns within each row um, as your first column as your first row because their first row sets the columns so you want to make sure those match up um, this technique was used years back when first when websites first started pre CSS um, to give layout to your page sorry to your website so you would actually use that first row for your header you would merge the second row um, the first two columns together to be your content section or your article section, then when you, you would use the last column of the second row to be your, your your sidebar section, and then the last row would be all merged to be your footer section. So that's that was the layout technique back in the day. Now I do not recommend it at all. Do not do it. We have CSS now, and also this is not responsive, which I'll go over in this course too. The responsive design, um, but with any information that you need to display. This kind of data, um, definitely use tables. 
it's really it's really nice. So this is still, I mean, this has been around for a long time and it's definitely still valuable when needed, when needed. 